Hello again, everyone. This is Linda with Linda Sue Plants for you. All right, this is the video I promised in my last video. And uh, as you can see, I did not clear my table yet, but that's okay. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about pest prevention and cure. Many of you that have, fo have been following me, my viewers who have commented and what have you, I want to thank you very much, first of all, for sticking with me and um, for commenting, and I appreciate your feedback. And as always, if you have anything to say after this, I would appreciate it then as well. What I want to talk about very quickly here, I don't want this to be a super long video because I don't want to bore anybody, but I do want to touch on these products. Um, I just saw a video, an old video I came across the other day, uh, someone talking about the different uh, types of products that you can use to rid your house plants of pests and how some of them work and some of them don't. So I, before I get into this, I want to just say, depending on the severity of your problem, there are some products that will work for some people and not for others. And having said that, I also want to touch on the additives in your soil. Um, orchid bark. I know a lot of people use orchid bark and a lot of people believe it's a great benefit and in some cases maybe even a necessity like when you're dealing with and raising orchids. However, I don't have any orchids and I got rid of the orchid bark. I am using up what I have left outside because outside the predators that we have inside, I mean the bugs that we have inside have natural predators outside. I have dealt with two major, major outbreaks of fungus gnats and uh, thrips, one of thrips. And I have not had a flying insect in my house now for uh, months, with the exception of a couple, I think there's five of them stuck on my fly strip in the bathroom, which I'm going to show you shortly. But <clears throat> I want to start out with these products, and I just want to say this is a natural product. It's made of, I think, corn corn husks, I believe. This this product, when I use it, I just put like a capful. In a gallon of warm, I, I put a capful of this in my gallon jug, and then I add some warm water. I shake it up really good so that this starts to dissolve, and then I fill it with room temperature water and shake it up, and I use that to water my plants. Now, that is how I used to do things. I stopped doing it because it was not completely effective. It did cut down greatly, but it was not totally effective, and I don't. To me, one fungus gnat is too many because they can lay up to 300 eggs at a time. So you can imagine how quickly that can get out of control. Now, I've seen people talk about putting, you know, vinegar and different things in cups and put them on the table and tell me that, yes, the, they're, they're trapping the fungus gnats. I am not here to dispel that or to say that that's not the case, but I can tell you that has not worked for me. The only time I have ever had a bug, and I did try that method about two years ago, and the only thing that was on there was a fruit fly. It was not a fungus gnat. And we looked through a microscopic lens to make sure. So if you have bugs that are landing in that, if you're using that method and you have flies in there that look like fungus gnats, chances are they're probably fruit flies. Um, I've never seen fungus gnats go for that. So I stopped that method. The other thing I want to caution against is these little yellow um, sticky traps that people put in their plants. That's okay to do if you know for sure that that plant has an infestation. Do not put those in healthy plants because it will attract the bugs to that healthy plant. And I had that happen to me as well. Um, going down the line here, th this method, like I said, if you don't have a huge infestation, it might work. Um, I've seen uh, some people add this right to their soil. What I don't like about this is the ones that float to the top, or if you're the type of person that just wants to 
you know, drizzle it on top of your soil, which many people do, it, it, it tends to grow fungus and we don't need that. So that is, that's it for this one. Um, these are the mosquito dunks. If you are collecting rainwater outside, these are great to use because any flying insect, whether it be a mosquito, fungus gnat, uh, fruit fly, whatever, flying insects, it will kill the larva. So if you have water, if you're collecting water outside and you don't have it in a covered container like they, they make those now, but if you don't have that, if you just have the water coming down into a pail, it's a good idea to set one of these dunks in there and that will kill any larva that starts to, you know, infest your water. Okay? Okay. Now, <clears throat> before I go into what I did use and how I used it, let me just say... I've been raising plants since my early 20s, and I'm 67 years old. Years ago, we did not have fungus gnats. We did not have thrips. I don't know why we have such a huge infestation of them nowadays, other than I can only say it's got to be because of the, the traveling of the plants all over the world and all over the country and back and forth. Regardless of what the reason is why we have them, we have them. Years ago, the worst thing we had were called cyclamen mites. And the way we got rid of those was we would take the pot with the plant in it, and maybe I can grab one here to show you what I mean. Well, this isn't going to be a very good example because this plant is stuffed to the top of the rim with whatever they got in there, sphagnum moss. But <clears throat> no, what we did with, for those, and it may still work for other larvae if you want to try it. It's a more natural method. What we did is we took a... Uh, half and half tobacco, and it had to be half and half. I don't remember the reason. Um, and my dad just happened to smoke a pipe, and that's what he used. So he gave me one of his little packets. And we put a packet of that in the soil, in the water, a bucket of water. And then you set this down in there, only as far as so that the water will almost reach up to the rim. The, the water has to cover the soil, but not the top of the rim. Because what will happen is that they don't like that tobacco it'll they will swim up to the top and they will try to get out but they won't be able to if your soil is level is right here you want that water to come just above so that they drowned okay now if you need further explanation on that like i said just feel free to to uh, shoot me a comment on either on instagram or here on youtube <clears throat> all right so next thing that i do and that i used to always do years ago is I would put my plants in a plastic bag for two weeks, 10 to 14 days, um, and, and I'm leaning more towards it to 14 days now, um, and out of bright light. they got to get light, but not bright light, bright and direct light. And I leave them in there, I, I put them in there, I zip the bag three-quarters of the way shut, and then I blow air in the opening and I quick shut it so that it has some air in the bag. And that has proven to be a very, very effective method of trapping those bugs on the new plants before you introduce them to your, your home. Um, then I take it outside, I wash the bag out thoroughly, and uh, wash the plant off and repot it, and I give it a spray with my bonite, my uh, uh, Jack's dead bug made by bonite. Um, the other thing is, getting back to the uh, orchid bark, last fall I had this bright idea, well I think it's a bright idea, I don't know, but it was, I happened to be just looking at my soil one day and thinking, you know, if fungus gnats are attracted to Decaying plant matter, which it is, doesn't orchid bark fall under that category? So I kept an eye on the orchid bark, and as it started to get older, yes, it did start to decay. And I thought, you know, I wonder if that's contributing to my problem. Another way that you can get uh, bugs is through your potting soil or any other potting medium that you bring home in a bag. I had one bag, and I'm not going to say the name of it because 
it's been more than one one brand and more than one company that this has happened with where I open the bag and what comes flying out are fungus gnats. Uh, so what do you do about that? I don't know. What I do about it is I open the bag on my back porch and before I bring it in the house, I make sure nothing's flying out of the bag. Then I bring it into my laundry room where I store my extra soil. I pour it out into the tub and then I cover the tub. Now, while that's somewhat effective, it's not completely effective only because the tub has little air holes in it, so they could still get out if they hatched in there. And if you make it completely uh, airtight, you're going to end up with mold because 9 out of 10 times or more when you buy soil, it's got it's damp. So you don't want to put it in an airtight container. You want it to get a little bit of air so it can breathe. So that's what I've been doing. And then the, from there, of course, I, I, I dip it out with my whatever container I have handy. I put it in my big black tub. I add to it my perlite, and then I, I go ahead and repot my plants. Now, when I repot, whenever I repot a plant, I always, always use this product. I just, it's, it's a granular product. It's systemic houseplant insect control. There's more than one of, kind of these. Make sure you get the houseplant one. And I don't use near as much as what the directions call for on the back. I just sprinkle a little bit on the top. Um, and I sometimes I, I, I fork it in or you know mix it in a little bit. Sometimes I just water over it and it, eventually it finds its way down. <clears throat> another, another thing to keep in mind, folks, is fungus gnats have to have moisture to live. So if you're like me, if you're chronic underwater like I've been in the past, that'll help a lot because those gnats tend to lay their eggs in the top several inches of your soil. So if you're letting that dry out for a period of time, chances are that's helping and that's going to help get rid of them as well. But it's not a foolproof method. So between that and my bag method and then putting this on the top of the soil, okay, and then I use my... my Jack's dead bug spray. I you have to shake it really well, and then I put that on top of the uh, on the leaves. Keep in mind that some of these insects can get in the stems of your plants, so you want to treat more than once because if as they come out and and you know I've heard people say once they have spider mites on a certain plant they can it's it's prone to them and they never get rid of it. I believe that would be why, because they can get inside the stems of the plants, or they hide in the new growth. Um, for instance, let me just show you this one. And thrips love these. They love to get down inside of there. So what I have been doing is spraying as best I can without without damaging or opening this up completely, as it's opening, I'm spraying. So that if there is anything living down in there, I'm getting it. And I know this because it, I had just had a horrible, horrible uh, outbreak of um, thrips. It was, it was just terrible trying to get rid of it. But I did. I do not have any, any flying insects. That's another thing I should mention here. Um, thrips... While they do fly, they don't fly well. So if you see a thrip, if you see a bug that you think is a fungus gnat and it's not flying away really fast, um, chances are it, it could be a thrip. So be careful. Thrips will fly, but they're, they're slow. If they get near you, you can, you can usually clap them with your two hands and, and kill them. Or if they land on you, you usually have enough time to slap it and kill it. Whereas with uh, fungus gnats, that's a very hard to do because they're very quick. Okay, so this, this, I wanted to show you this. This is a the concentrate of the Jack's dead bug, and I did end up buying two bottles of these when I had the thrips outbreak. Thrips are very difficult to get rid of, but this did it. Between this product and this, like I said before, this one I is for this for the leaves. I also wash the leaves. I wash them before I used the spray um, under a, a hard spray of water in my kitchen sink. I just wash the leaves really well, rub them with my fingers, and then um, kind of 
you know, put the granules in here and kind of move that around with a with a, uh, a stick or whatever I have handy, and then I water it in. <clears throat> uh, also, I would repot if you if you know for sure that you have either of those bugs. It's a good idea to just dump the old soil and start over with new soil. And I know that's not the best answer for everybody. Many of you are living on an extremely tight budget right now and I understand if you're reluctant to repot all your plants or throw away what you think might be perfectly good soil I get it but when I measure that weigh that against uh, having to replace my plants for me it's, it's that is the answer okay um, and again it, everybody has their own way of doing things I'm not saying any one way is right or wrong but I, I will say that if you believe that you have, especially thrips, it, it's not something where you can say, I only have one or two, I'm not too worried about it, or it's only on one plant, I'm just going to segregate it. You need to get that out of your house, folks. They are, they're, they're, they're horrid, and they do, they will kill your plant, and they do a lot of damage. They just eat the leaves, and the roots, and the stems. I mean, they're, they're voracious. So, now that I am bug-free, knock on wood, hopefully I will stay that way, um, I'd like to just take you into my bathroom and show you what my final, my final step is. And I will have to disconnect you from my tripod, so just bear with me a moment while I do that. And there it is. This is the fly strip I was telling you about. This comes in, this strip comes rolled up in this little round canister. It's very tiny, it's about two inches, two and a half inches. And those come in a box. And you get about, I think eight of them in a box for like two and a half dollars. That is the strip. And it's ugly, yes, but very effective on the fungus, the adult fungus and adult thrips. Now as you can see, there's not much on here. I'll try to do a close-up and see if I can capture. You can see there's one or two on there. So I am leaving this up for a little while longer just to make sure. But I didn't put this in my last video when I was talking about fungus gnats. I totally forgot. But this is very important because you need to get the adults. And if they're, even if they're sitting on the leaf when you go to spray it, chances are it's going to fly off before it gets hit with that spray. So, uh, this is the way to get it. And I, I turn the, this light on at night. This is our overhead light in the bathroom. Um, when there's no other lights on in the house especially, they will go toward the light. So they will come in here, and that's how I'm capturing the adults. And like I said, it's a very, very effective method. Before I got these under control, this strip was full of thrips. Full. I mean, you could hardly even see the, the sticky tape. It, they were just covered. So that's how well this works. And again, it's just a, I think it's just called a sticky fly trap. And it comes in a row. I wish I could reach it so I could turn it around for you, but I can't, so... Um, but I can look, so if somebody really wants the name of that, I can, I can let you know through the comment section, okay? And then last but not least, I want to mention that I am starting to use neem oil. I just got, got a, a bottle of it, and I'm going to be incorporating that into my, my everyday plant care. And I will give you an update on that and let you know how that works for me. Um... Up till now, I, I haven't used neem oil, but I'm going to give that a try. So thank you all for coming. I hope this was informative. I hope it helped some of you. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. All right. Thank you all for coming. Bye now.